Hello guys and welcome back to Coniferia. In this episode we are expanding the city of Port Douglas with what is probably the biggest single expansion we've ever made in this region as we built the neighborhood of Real Hills and we transitioned the dense row house neighborhoods of southern Port Douglas into the very first true detached single family areas of the city which is uh, pretty exciting stuff I think. Now whether you're new or regular here on the channel, you are of course very welcome on board as we are building the region of Coniferia, which is a fictional, highly detailed city skylines region taking inspiration from New Zealand, Australia, Canada and the US. And as always, if you enjoy my content, I would greatly appreciate liking, commenting, subscribing, enabling notifications and all that good stuff as it increases the reach of the channel and engagement. Thank you. Alright, so where exactly are we here in Coniferia for today's episode? Well, if we zoom in on the city of Port Douglas on this big island, uh, we find ourselves just immediately south of the hillside neighborhood. And if you remember from a few episodes back when we built Hillside, uh, the backstory basically is that the rich industrialist Mr. Morgan Driver was unhappy with the fact that most of the elites and wealthy individuals that sprung up in Port Douglas were settling in the neighborhood of Inner Brickville. He generally found that this neighborhood was located too close to the harbor and industrial areas where he had his manufactories and so he envisioned a much more posh upscale neighborhood somewhere in the hills above the downtown core of Port Douglas. He bought a large parcel of land and started developing these very very fancy row houses and today this area is uh, quite a real it's really an expensive desirable area and it's known as hillside. Zoning regulations in hillside are pretty loose which means that we've got this crazy mix of uh, really tall residential luxury condo skyscrapers uh, next to these very old and beautifully ornamented and detailed row houses. Now, the story of today's neighborhood is very much linked to the story of Hillside because Real Hills is actually a neighborhood that was kind of established uh, as sort of a defiance action against Mr. Morgan Driver because shortly after Morgan's purchase and development of the areas that are today Hillside, a consortium of factory workers and union members from the ports here in Port Douglas got together and were able to secure financing uh, enough to purchase the land lots immediately south of Hillside, so basically uh, bounding directly next to Hillside. And they envisioned something very, very different. They wanted to sell up these lots, uh, to carve up the lots individually and sell them to uh, factory workers or at least working class individuals and allow them to build row houses in this area. They were staunchly against Mr. Morgan Driver's elitism as they called it and they wanted to offer the same um, amenities and luxury of living in a more quiet part of Port Douglas with some breathtaking views of the uh, waters and the downtown core but to a much more affordable price and to a, an entirely different clientele so practically they made it possible for some of in theory Mr. Morgan Driver's employees to move in uh, within just a few blocks of where Mr. Morgan Driver himself lived uh, and I guess it's sort of a, an additional sign of defiance they choose to name the district Real Hills instead of uh, choosing a more neutral name and it has always been perceived as a pretty obvious uh, attack on Mr. Morgan Driver's elite project by creating an area that would house more real people as they would see it or at least more ordinary people because Mr. Morgan Driver was of course part of a very very small very very wealthy elite and thus he did not represent a large demographic in the city yet his hillside district towered over the rest of downtown and was quite a substantial thing to behold. Now this backstory for Real Hills and the hillside dynamic between the two neighborhoods uh, would prove to be a real challenge for me building up this place because uh, on the one hand I need to make these two neighborhoods uh, pretty distinct from each other 
uh, but at the same time the transition can't be too rough uh, at least I don't feel that would look very nice. We've got this main avenue with the uh, tram lines that sort of separate Hillside from Real Hills. And I don't want the transition from one neighborhood to the other to be too stark. Um, but it is going to be somewhat obvious in some of the, the final cinematics. And I think there's also just the natural boundary of the scale that we're working with, at least here in uh, Coniferia. Um, the scale of city skylines is just uh, it has to be a lot smaller than a real city at least if you use a you know workshop content heavy uh, setup as we do here in Coniferia where we are pushing anywhere anywhere from nine to ten thousand custom assets and props I think that's also part of the motivation for the Crystal Reef County series that I have going on right now is that just the lower level of custom stuff is hopefully going to make it a little easier to achieve big city scale. But anyways, speaking of the uh, challenge of building this this uh, this area, I think and I hope that you guys will really enjoy the final results because as I kind of teased in the introduction, this neighborhood is actually the first neighborhood here in Port Douglas and on the on this island as a whole where we get to transition into some detached single, single family houses. So uh, one thing that I wanted to really try and achieve here in Real Hills is that as we move for like for each block, each road that we move uh, further away from Hillside and thus downtown Port Douglas as well, uh, we need to try and lower the density uh, in a kind of smooth transition. Uh, and I mix it up a little so that we've got one block where we go straight from our row houses to these pretty narrow single family detached houses. And then there are going to be other parts here in real hills where the transition is a little more mixed and smooth. Where you will have one block which is like 50-50 between the two. Uh, and then the block immediately north will be primarily row houses and the block immediately south will be primarily single family detached housing. Generally working with these transitions is something that I find very, very enjoyable. Uh, but it's also kind of tricky because you, it's an important part of like the urban expansion to any city you build, how you manage these transitions. And I think that's also one of the reasons that despite the many which is that I don't feel will be fulfilled by City Skylines 2, uh, then the extra layers of zoning uh, choices that we have in City Skylines 2 is going to make these transitions much, much easier. I can't wait to work with a large city where I get to uh, transition more... Uh, uh, smoothly but using actual zoning because of course here in City Skylines 1 even if you were to zone which I never do because I don't enjoy it in this game you have two densities you know two density categories for residential housing which is just way too little um, because it means that you have all these types of real life densities everywhere from a single a uh, story, a uh, single family bungalow, uh, a really small house basically, and all the way to, you know, a 60, uh, a 60 story residential condo tower from Chicago. And basically you've got two categories that they can fit into. Uh, so the issue isn't that the lowest residential category will contain the house and the highest will contain the condo tower. The issue is that there is nothing in between. So where do you place a three-story row house for instance well we can see with asset creators on the workshop that they are unsure of what to do as well because some of them will categorize their row houses as a high density residential construction due to the fact that it contains more than one family dwelling and others will categorize it as a low density residential uh, type zoning because they feel it fits better and there's neither a wrong or right in this aspect because I mean the game doesn't really allow you to be uh, much more in depth than these two types and it's a bit unfortunate and I'm really looking forward to this change in uh, City Skylines 2.
Now, if we turn our focus back to real hills and how we're building up this neighborhood, you will be seeing tons of plopping, you know, having to plop, of course, every single building. But since this is also hilly terrain and I'm not using a strict 90 degree uh, grid for the road layout, we are also challenged on just the placement of the buildings. Just plopping them is not enough. I have to manually adjust each and every building to get the look I want. Obviously, this takes quite a bit of time, but the end result is uh, is all the more worth it, I feel. So, yeah, uh, what we've built so far is are these two main blocks where the density is a little higher. We are right near the highway and close to the center of Port Douglas, so I think it... I felt it made sense to have uh, some uh, tenement buildings here, four, five, six stories tall. We've even got two apartment towers, more than 10 stories tall, fused together. But as we start moving a little further away from these inner blocks of uh, real hills, that's where the real transition is going to, uh, to happen. And I think with, uh, with all this said and done by now, I am going to just... Uh, quiet down for a bit and turn up the music and, and let you guys uh yeah let you guys watch the uh, continued expansion of this area <laughs>